Time passed in the past up to the arrival of the Ring of Fire. But we also have to keep in mind that time is passing after the arrival of the Ring of Fire. And not everybody, not even the allies who think, well, yes, generally what they're creating here is a good idea and we're going along with it, are going to cut all of their lifelines. They're going to be all over the Germanys, people who say, yeah, we'll go along with Gustav as emperor. Yeah, we'll go along with the way the state of Thuringia Franconia is being set up. But, and that but is going to be, we're going to have a fallback position. And it's not just going to be nobles who are going to have a fallback position. It's going to be city councils. It's going to be village leaseholders. They're all, for a long time, going to say, we are going to hold out a certain amount of commitment until we are 100 pretty much percent sure that what they're trying here is going to work. And that could take another 100 years for them to be sure. Um, they'll probably do it in 50. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, they're not going to do it in 5 or 10. No. And there's a push on the part of many of the authors of the series to have, in my opinion, change take place faster than it's likely to. Now, many changes will take place very fast, and some of them will be irreversible. You can think of an example, I can easily. The restructuring of the educational systems mm -hmm. is essentially going to be irreversible. It will not be possible to put the genie back in the bottle of women's colleges. No. They just aren't going to be abolishable. They're too much of an investment on the part of the organizations like uh, the Damenstifte in Quedlinburg that's been establishing them. Uh, these well, and the women themselves are going to resist not letting their daughters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could be done. It that could, could be. be done. It would still but, be difficult. No, the, listen, the, the rule of history, the basic rule of history, if you want to be remembered as time goes on and the centuries pass. If you want to be remembered in history, what do you need to do? Attach your name to something that's worth a lot of money. Yes, found an institution. The people who are remembered are plaques on the wall we have founded this. And when you have an institution going, the institution is not going to give up easily. Organizations are... The iron law of bureaucracy. The iron law of bureaucracy, the sheer power of human inertia. Inertia not in the sense of... Physics. Sitting you know, and not being lazy, but inertia in the sense that once it's founded, it's really hard to get rid of. Uh, as anybody who has ever dealt with uh, organizations knows. Uh, the other day I was stuck at the Red Cross for two hours donating platelets. You know, you sit there with your blood going in and out, and they gave me the the young Victoria to watch on their little DVD player that they put on your lap to keep you tranquil while you're doing this. <laughs> and uh, much of it was on 
Prince Albert's frustrations when he discovered that the fires were laid and lighted by two different sets of palace bureaucrats, so the room was always cold because they didn't coordinate, that the palace windows were always dirty because two different sets of officials were responsible for washing the inside and the outside, and the inside and the outside never got washed at the same time, that the dinner for King George III's bodyguard was still being laid out every night even though the man had been dead for 25 years because nobody had issued an order um, saying don't, saying make, don't dinner. make dinner for the king's personal bodyguard anymore. Uh, this is an essential element of all organizations. If it has been established and if nobody thinks to change it, it will just gradually grind on and on and on. So the new schools are organizations, and they essentially will not be changed. There will continue to be a normal school in Amberg, probably for the next 600 years, whether the USE flourishes or collapses. The things that it has started on this kind of institutional level will keep going. So you have this kind of thing. However, just as these things have started, the fact remains that by 1635, these schools are starting their first classes. It's going to be three or four years before they start turning out graduates. It's going to be 10 to 15 years after that before the graduates are old enough to have worked themselves up into positions of influence. Uh, so the rate at which they impact society is going to be much slower. Yes. But accelerated. Accelerated, but. Um, it, it will continue to accelerate once it starts. It will once continue it once it starts. It's yeah. going to be a, that's why I say there's going to be a lot that will be irreversible. But it's not all going to happen immediately. And of course, having it happen immediately is what a lot of story writers want to do because uh, they want their particular little Button. piece of quartz to uh, be the light shining in the darkness that brings uh, illumination to uh, the people who were sitting there in the shadows like Plato's poor guys with uh, fire flickering behind them. Uh, everybody wants to be the light bulb. That's, that's one uh, problem I have with a lot of a lot of the stories that I read in Slush. Um, you know, the the brilliant uptimers are going to lift the downtimers out of the doldrums of uh, <laughs> ignorance, you know. There, there's not a lot of ignorance running around in the downtimers. They just may not know about television, but I don't think that's a bad thing. Well, I don't <laughs> say, uh, there are as many ignorant downtimers proportionate to the population overall, as there are ignorant uptimers in the United States today. In other words, exactly. uh, you have a certain proportion of the population always that's oblivious to what's going on around them, uh, whatever it may be. But they're um, not stupid but, compared to but they're not. No, they're, they're just the same pretty much bell curve distribution exactly. of uh, people who are around and available. Uh, who was it yesterday who was calculating the number of people in the Germanys overall and figuring there were probably available in the Germanys enough genius level minds larger than the entire population of Grantville from the elderly down to the children exactly. who were uh, transferred. And the thing is that not all of them will find Grantville inspiring. Some of them will find Grantville quite horrible and devote that genius to complaining about every single thing that is introduced. And we haven't had very many of those accounted for in the stories yet. Uh, there's been a tendency 
to make villains really villainous. Instead of just skeptical. Also, mm -hmm. There's also a very powerful tendency on the part of a lot of us to write stories that are by and large pleasant. And it's and it's very difficult to write a pleasant story that features someone whose ethics and whose substantial philosophical beliefs are offensive to you, you know, and so, mm -hmm. so, so I, you're absolutely correct that there will be those people. It's really hard to write stories about them. It is, yes, uh, but nevertheless, they will be there, and they will be a resistance, resistance mm -hmm. to uh, what is coming along. Now, of course- Do you think they're gonna take up arms? I doubt it very much because most of them uh, will not be associated with uh, militant organizations. Uh, and most, you have to keep in mind that many of them will also not be directly arguing against the new ideas introduced by Granville. Many of them will go back to what will right, continue doing what they did in their own days, which is arguing with one another about things that have absolutely nothing to do with what Granville introduced. Uh, I, David Carrico is doing music uh, this afternoon, and I brought him a book to look at, and he delved into with fascination. It's called Worship Wars in Early Lutheranism. In oh, which, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. In which, uh, it covers the disputes from the 1530s into the 1630s, intra-Lutheran, about how to do liturgy, uh, this type of what, thing. What music is appropriate. What music is appropriate, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, these, of course, still go on. Oh, um, yes. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> Not just with Lutherans. <laughs> but, uh, you know, basically, this yeah, is one of the things. Exactly. Yes, uh, Granville is going to have a tremendous impact, but there um, are going to be among those millions of downtimers a lot of people who go right on arguing with one another about other things, completely ignoring what is going on behind them because they're just not interested. Well, what's really important is whether or not there's a comma in the second sentence of the confession. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's really important whether there should. Remember, I've had some of these people, uh, Bernhard of Saxe Weimar, you think of him as a military leader, but he is saying, and I am completely committed to the unaltered Augsburg Convention which means the one that was adopted in 1630, not the one that was revised by Philip Melanchthon about 15 years later, which was regarded by someone like Bernhardt as having uh, was being doctrinally wishy-washy toward the Calvinists. Slightly heretical. No, not heretical, uh, just Wishy -washy. Wishy -washy. Uh, my, my, allowing my, for wiggle room where there should be sorry. no wiggle room. Uh, Laura, Laura um, Runkel. Runkel tells the story of being in um, the basement of the Presbyterian Church in Cedar Rapids where she lives.